All right, welcome back. Uh, yes, Christopher, you can please ask your question, share your thoughts. Ah, yes, uh, thank you, Pastor. So uh, actually I have two points. Um, the first one is um, in with, uh, reference to a point in, in the notes uh, with regards to, uh, you know, from the initial 12 that is formed, when um, some of them are, uh, are uh, you know, moved to become cell, uh, cell or group, uh, life group leaders. Uh, is, there, is there an expectation that uh, they need to attend uh, or lead the, lead the new group that they are forming? And uh, they should also attend the, uh, the, uh, the group that, you know, that initially was started. So there was a point there, you know, that applies to life groups or is it to, is really to cell groups? We just want a clarification on that. Um, and the second point is, you know, with um, you know, with churches, um, you know, sort of expanding and you know, growing, um, as well as you know, when churches are you know are formed uh, in the initial stages, and you know, cell groups and life groups are formed, um, sometimes there's this uh, sort of a, uh, expectation that the cell groups, you know, form a, a much closer. Uh, relationship with uh, with their uh, with their particular you know smaller group and um, uh, sometimes what what happens is that um, uh, you know that uh, the cell group leader um, is is sort of like a representative of you know for that church um, and um, uh, in a particular case in point I, I mean I was this is the sort of a you know, someone who who specifically mentioned this is that the cell group leader actually um, uh, was, uh, you know, was, you know, um, asked by you know one of one of the uh, people in the group that you know the pe person in the group wanted to actually go and approach the uh, the, the the the, pa the pastor of the, of the church, and uh, the cell group leader, you know, uh, specifically mentioned that you know, the leader come to uh, uh, you know, through the cell group, or he should the cell group leader itself, not go directly to the pastor. So I just wanted to understand, uh, you know, or maybe you can provide provide your comment on that, on on that and the earlier point here. Sure, sure. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, both very valid questions and valid points. Now, for the first one, to become a life group leader uh, at APC, this is what we follow they should have been part of our church for one year at least now when i say part of the church it's not like they come sunday and attend and go right uh, they should be at least volunteering in any area uh, they should uh, be part of our weekend schools uh, and as pastors we get to see right we get to see people <clears throat> in the church we see their attitudes we see how they are and so one of the criteria is they should be part of the church for one year Another criteria is that they should have attended a life group for at least six months. And why do we do this? Because, see, people are coming probably from different churches, from different cities. They're coming into Bangalore. Now, uh, they may have a certain idea about a cell group, right? They may have been cell group leaders for 10 years, right? Or 15 years also, right? And now immediately they want to be. Uh, you know, a, a cell group leader uh, in in APC, but the reason we give them like six months and tell them, hey, be part of this life group, is so that they see uh, how a cell group is. Right now, they may have been a cell group leader for ten years; they know everything. That's all right, but APC we function this way, right? So we encourage. Firstly, they should have been part of the church for one year involved in church activities being part of church activities probably even volunteering in any area secondly uh, at least six months they must be a part of a life group right so they get to see how the life group is life group leaders uh, 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 you know uh, how their life is how a life group how's the structure of a life group what do we do in a life group and why do we do it in a life group so they get a you know a rough idea as to what it is and once we feel uh, you know what we also do is uh, we tell the life group leader see this couple is going to come to your life group 
uh, they've been, for example, right? They've been believers for uh, 30 years. Now they want to start a family life group, uh, but they are new to APC. They've been here for past uh, one year. So we tell the life group leader, right? So just work with them, just involve them, see how they are, right? See if they're asking questions, whether they're interacting, whether they're open to, you know, talking to people, uh, how how is their character? So we give them this time and then we we keep checking with the life group leader so did they attend the life group you know because sometimes uh you know many people they are so used to leadership that they cannot sit you know you know they they have to talk they have to be like you know, in uh in this place where i should make some you know i should talk i should be able to make some decisions uh so how's how's their attitude so so christopher to answer that question one one year being part of APC, volunteering to uh, six months being part of a life group. And once the life group leader says, yes, they, they can start, then we take them through the entire uh, cell group, uh, life group leaders training module, which we have. It's about an hour of training. And then for the first six months, we just work with them. Uh, basically, what I do is I call them, talk to them, ask them how was the life group, how did it go, were there any new people who came, uh, what was how were they discussing questions. So there's this regular. So the life group leader also knows that hey, you know, there's somebody who's you know checking up, uh, uh, and and there's somebody who uh, I'm accountable to also, right? So that's it. That's one. The second question was, uh, so, sorry, can you repeat the second question, Christopher? Uh, the second question was really about, uh, you know, the cell, the, the life group or the cell, cell group leader, you know, representing um, uh, the church um, or, you know, the pastor, the, uh, you know, the, the, the leadership team. And uh, again, this could be, a, this could be just, you know, an exceptional case, but, uh, I was informed that you know that a, a cell group, uh, a cell group or life group, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, leader was sort of kind of dissuaded the, the 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 member of that life group to go directly to the pastor and said that you know you come through me you know uh, because I in a sense you know I'm I'm sort of like you know representing. Uh, don't go directly to the pastor. You know, there could be reasons. You know, he's busy. He's, you know, why? You know, why necessarily you want to go? Yes. Come through me, and that's why I just wanted to get that. Uh, you know, yes. Some yeah. Uh, thank you, Chris. So, one of the things that we teach uh, uh, in live groups is, you know, for example, I have a problem. Right? It's always good that I first go to the live group leader, right? I can go to the live group leader and share. But if I feel that I want somebody who's a little bit mature or more mature or somebody who can really give me some good uh, you know, uh, uh, direction on what I have to do next. Uh, and if I feel that, that I want to talk to some, you know, somebody from the pastoral team, there's nothing wrong with that. So what we tell our life group leaders is, and our life group members is if you, feel that you want to <clears throat> talk to somebody first go to your life group leader and if you feel that your life group you, you know you want somebody else you can always go to your pastor and we tell the life group leader also don't force anything upon our church members right uh, because many a times they want to speak to the senior pastor they want to speak to the pastoral team right now if i say no you have to go through me it becomes legalistic now this person will feel, hey, I have to tell this person about my problem, right? And we don't want that to happen, right? Uh, so we give them the freedom. We give the life group members the freedom. And we also tell the life group leaders that, you know, if people don't come to you and share, if they want to go to the pastors directly, don't get offended. Don't feel that you're not anointed. That's why they're not coming. It's not about that. It's just that, you know, they prefer going to a pastor, a, a pastor, right? Uh, so it's all right. There's nothing to feel offended. We tell our leaders, right? Um, so it's all right. We never force them, right? Uh, you have to come through us and only then go to the pastor. No, 
Now, for example, if there's somebody in the church, uh, you know, a young man, he's part of my life group. Example, right? I'm a youth. I'm a life group leader, youth leader. And this guy comes up to me and says, you know, I'm suicidal. Now, I'm still a youth. I'm probably 24, 25 years. I'm going to say, hey, why you want to you know, think about all this? You know, God has given us life and life in abundance. I can quote a lot of scriptures and do all that. Right. But I don't know the, you know, the real, the problem is really deep. It's a big problem. But as a life group leader, I might just say, hey, God is with you, you know. It's it's good. It's good advice. God is with you. God, you know, read God's word. All those thoughts will go away. But this guy is going through the suicide problems probably from past five years. Right. So what what it is? I know that this person needs counseling, <clears throat> and he needs Christian counseling from a professional. Sorry, one. So, sorry. So, some, so what we also do in APC is, if people are like this situation comes, we don't even send them to the pastor. We say go to the. We connect them to the Christian counseling. We have Chrysalis counseling, so we connect them there, right? Uh, because as pastors, there's only so much that we can do, but we know that this person needs ongoing counseling professional counseling so there's nothing wrong in that right so uh, but forcing a church member saying you have to go through me that's wrong and that's something that we don't advise our church folks to do right. I uh, hope so. thank you i just wanted to confirm on that on that first point um you you are the 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 person who has started this new life group as a leader uh, they will just attend their, their their meeting, right? They don't need to attend the earlier meeting. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, they should attend the the live group. If they want to start one, they should attend one for at least six months. No, no, I understand that. But I'm saying after the six months is over and they have, uh, uh, you know, um, yeah. you know they're, they're doing a good job, then they don't need to attend the earlier one. They can just no. start there. They can just yes. do that. Yes, they can just start their own live group. Right. And so uh, once they're ready, we take them to the training and immediately they can start the life group. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So Kennedy has a question. Can a cell group leader lead to a church plant? If yes, how and what requirement will you consider? OK, that's a good question. Now, I know that uh, especially in different churches, we have you know, cell groups are a way of planting churches also. But we must understand that church plant and cell groups are different. Right now, it can be done. Uh, but why we don't do that is because we want cell groups to remain as a cell group to minister to the people within the church. So it's not that we want to start new churches. Right. So, uh, so that's something that we don't do at APC. I'm sure there are other churches that uh, so in APC, what we have normally done when we started our, you know, branches, branch churches, not South East West is we usually meet at somebody's house. Now, we'll not call it a life group, but what we used to do is we used to meet probably on a Wednesday or a Thursday in a person's house. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we would, you know, uh, so, for example, there's no church in east of Bangalore. Right, so we would go there. Uh, I, I'm just sharing how we started APC East. Uh, so there were a few folks at our main location. We told them, "Hey, can we go to this part of the city where there is a lot of IT and apartment complexes coming out? We need to start a church there, right?" But life groups were still happening everywhere. But we need to start a church there. So there were about uh, five, six of them. Uh, few couples and a few youth from this main church we they went to this part of the city that is east and started having prayers right every weekly prayers so they would pray lord you know open doors for us we want to start a church here lead us uh, bring give lead us to the right place help us to know when to start uh, that we maybe we may impact this part of the city so for about 6 months they did that 
every week once. Then after six months, we thought, okay, let's start. We prayerfully, everything was done prayerfully, right? So we prayerfully, we prayed, we said, okay, God, let's start. Uh, and I'm sure God will uh, lead us. Right? Now, the intention of going and starting that, you know, that Bible study and worship and prayer was to start a church, right? We didn't go there saying we'll start a life group and that life group will become a church. No, the intention itself was to start a church. So eventually, 2000, I think it's 2012, September, we started APC East, which is one of our locations. Right? We, uh, we were just a handful of people. We were probably 10 people, and those 10 were from the main church who were attending here. But over time, families started coming, youth started coming, people started joining. Right? And, and so that became one of our church locations. And out of that, we started many more life groups. So the reason we don't want this whole thing of life group, cell groups becoming a church is then it becomes a competition. Right? Hey, how come he gets to start a church? And we don't get to start a church. How come you allowed him? That means he's more spiritually mature and I'm not. You know, it all becomes a competition. So we avoid it. Kennedy, I hope that answers your question. Okay. All right. So let's get into our notes. Let me just uh, project, present the notes. Okay. Okay. So the cell group meeting, this is what uh, we follow at APC, right? Uh, and then uh, the, the, these are things that you can tweak. You can change it according to your uh, convenience. So we have a time limit set uh, of 90 minutes to a maximum of, of 120 minutes. Uh, and then we meet once a week or once in two weeks. So most of our life groups meet once in two weeks. right? And, uh, uh, and there are some life groups that meet weekly, uh, but they are hybrid life groups, meaning they meet one week online, the next week in person, right? So it can be flexible um, as long as everyone in the group has been informed, right? So let's look at a few general guidelines. Now, this is very important, right? Uh, without guidelines, uh, everything will go haywire, right? So just a few general guidelines. And this is basically... Uh, a portion of what we teach for our life group leaders training module, right? So general guidelines, all members are encouraged to share and we ask that everyone speak openly and honestly, right? So it's not just another like a church meeting, right? Where the one person comes, the life group leader keeps sharing and we keep listening. No, all members in the group are encouraged to share, speak openly. Speak honestly. So, for example, you know, we went through those sermon series on faith and science and the mind. All of them are open to start sharing. They may say, hey, I didn't understand this. And nobody's going to point fingers and laugh and say, how can you not understand? No. Be open. Be honest. Because, it, it, because it's a small group and it's your place to talk and to open up. Right? Uh, very important. Each person should feel safe about opening up. Uh, but please remember, it is very important that we stress confidentiality, right? So this is something that uh, we strive for in EPC. Right now, people will share a lot of things, right? Uh, there are different kinds of people, right? We must remember there are people who don't like to share too much. They share a little bit. There are people who don't share anything at all. And there are some who share everything. Right? They're very fast. They, you know, they they just open up. They may be just second or third time in a life group, but they just open up. Right now, it's very important uh, as life group leaders and as a life group to keep things confidential. So, for example, there's it's a family life group, and this wife comes and says, you know what, my husband is you know, drinking, and uh, it's just an example, right? Husband is drinking, uh, he, he's a very good husband, but he comes home, he drinks, and uh, 
you know, it, it makes us very sad. He sometimes uses abusive language. Uh, and I just want you to pray for him that God will change his heart. Now, the last thing we must do is talk about this to other people. This is a serious matter, right? Uh, because we we inform our life group members and leaders do not talk about anything confidential. Right? Because the person has confided in the group, right? So never talk about it outside. Or when you look at them at church, don't look at them as, oh, yeah, I know this man's husband, this woman's husband is a drunkard. He drinks. So that's why he's not come to church. It's very easy for us to come up with all kinds of thoughts. Right? We begin to judge people. So we, sh we must never do that. Stay confident. Keep it to yourself. Keep it within the group, right? where you say, OK, group, uh, there's, the better way to look at this is, OK, sister, don't worry. We're going to pray for you as a group. We'll, we'll stand with you. And we believe that by the end of this year, God is going to restore you, restore your family, restore your husband as well. And we'll, we, will, we will keep it. You can also uh, tell the group, let's keep it confidential among ourselves, and we will pray. Yeah. And that's, a, that's one thing I'm really uh, happy to say that in APC, We've always, uh, all the leaders that we have, all our life group members, we've always, you know, kept that confidential, uh, kept things confidential. So that's good. We will reach out to our family, neighbors, and friends with goals of bringing them to Christ. Again, evangelism. We will keep in mind the interaction in line with what Christ is doing in our midst uh, and refrain from storytelling that is irrelevant to the subjects we are discussing. Now, this is very important. So for example, uh, life group is starting, and you finish two songs. You had uh, uh, you know, probably an icebreaker. And then now, you, as a life group leader, you say, OK, let's all sit. We're going to discuss about Sunday sermon. Sunday sermon was about uh, purpose, God's purpose for our life. So everyone start talking. And suddenly, this one person gets the chance. And they may say, I wanted to talk about what God spoke to me last month. In the book of Exodus, Moses went to the burning bush and he got the tent. Now, what is the first thing you must do? First thing as a life group leader is to stop that person at its right then and there. Right? Now, is he talking something good? Yes. Is it biblical? Yes. Can we get blessed? Yes. But is it in line with the topic? No. Right. So you stop it there. Right. Uh, it, it may not, it's not storytelling. It is from the Bible, but it's not in line with the topic. Imagine all of them are talking about God's purpose for their life. Suddenly somebody's talking about Moses in the burning bush. It doesn't make sense. Right. So make sure that here, here's is another important, uh, you know, thing that a life group leader should do is to stir the conversation in line, right? To facilitate the discussion. Now, remember, there will be times you, you know, you may say, uh, brother, can we, can we go back to the main discussion? This was the topic. Now that person, one, can get offended and say, I'm never going to come back to this life group. Two, he may say, oh, I apologize. Let's go back and just. Or three, he may say, get offended, but he continues to come to the life group. Now, remember that you and I cannot control other people's emotions. We are doing what is right for the group. right? Uh, so it's all right. Uh, as a life group leader or care cell leader, you have to come to a place where you make decisions which is beneficial for the group. And you can always meet with the person later on and say, you know, uh, 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 I know I stopped you at your track. The reason is we were discussing this. So one of the things we tell our life group leaders is even before the life group starts, when you start off the life group, a new life group, we go through, go through the guidelines of the life group with everyone right, so that they are aware, OK, if I'm getting a chance to ask questions or to discuss, I cannot talk about anything else apart from this. So I'm already aware. 
right? So that's one thing we always tell our life group leaders. Uh, okay, we will not murmur, gossip, condemn, be judgmental, criticize. No, we will not do that. Prayer, this is one area that can give, bring most growth and strength to our group. So we ask each cell member to include the cell members and the ministry of our group in their prayer life. So we keep praying for each other, <clears throat> ministering to each other. And uh, of course, during the cell life group also, you can have uh, extended time of prayer, maybe 20 minutes or half an hour. So some of the life groups that meet, I think I mentioned this, they meet, they have uh, you know prayer walks, prayer drives. Uh, uh, they meet additionally online to spend time on, in prayer. Uh, so prayer is really something that can strengthen the life group. And uh, the life group leader must also be, you know, take, um, take hold of this, right? He must understand that, hey, as a life group leader, my life, my prayer life, I, I must be able to pray for my life group members now. Uh, and, you know, it will be beneficial for the group itself. Now, last one, we will always keep the vision of the church foremost in mind to be salt and light to the city of Bangalore, voice of the nation and the nation. So here's where uh, is another important aspect. So, so uh, as the question came, can we can care cells become plant churches uh and that's why we don't want to do that right so one of the thing is we keep telling our church members hey we are doing this because we are fulfilling the vision of the church the vision is to be salt and light to the city of bangalore voice the nation and to the nations so we keep reiterating that right so nobody in their mind is thinking oh i'll start my own church or it could be an APC church itself, but it's not led from God. So we don't want to do anything that way, right? We always keep the vision of the church. Hey, if, whether there are 10 people, 12 people, the vision is to be salt and light. Uh, bring, uh, bring flavor, bring light where it's darkness, bring fellowship, community within the church, right? Look at this uh, sample schedule. Now you can change this. Of course, you can do it however you'd like. 10 minutes arrival, refreshments, then 10 minutes of praise and worship, icebreaker for 10 minutes, uh, five minute vision statement. Look at this 40 minutes word study with open discussion. This is the key. This is the most important part. And then there's 15 minutes for prayer and ministry. Now, this is just a sample schedule, right? So some of them they arrive they begin with praise and worship uh and after praise and worship they some some of them have an icebreaker some of them don't have an icebreaker they just go into the vision and spend more time in the word study and discussions right? and then have prayer and ministry so you can make changes and see what works for you best right right so uh i think we'll stop here because this uh the upward, inward, outward, forward model is a very powerful model. Uh, this is written by Jim Igley. Uh, hold on. Written by Jim Igley is a powerful uh, book. So we'll take it up from next week. I don't want that break. Yes, Mangi has raised his hand. Go ahead, Mangi. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I just have quick, uh, one or two questions based on the time. Why, uh, why is there specific time set for for the meeting, and does the uh, uh, life group leaders have a freedom to change that to make their own time or to change the time they meet and where they meet? Uh, secondly, um, if the church controls uh, everything that the life group uh, do. Is that not legalistic? I'm asking because sometimes in a group, um, yep. you have people struggling with finance, and then that is relevant to that group at, the, at that moment. Can they, they, they have freedom to discuss about that? So instead of discussing the topic, can they focus on how to deal with finance for three weeks or two weeks and not speak about the topic that uh, the church is talking about? Thank you, Pastor. Yes. 
very valid questions. Thank you, Mangi. Okay, the first question is the life group leader has the freedom to choose whatever timing. Right? So for example, if I have a family group, I know that people are working Monday to Friday, right? So sometimes people get home by 7 or 8 p.m. And it's very difficult for them to be, you know, get ready. And some of our life groups even, you know, they usually prefer to start 7, 6.37. So many of our life groups are on weekends. They happen on Saturday and Sunday. Now they have a choice, right? They can have it since Sunday is a holiday. Some They can have it at 10 a.m. They can have it at 3 p.m. They can have it at 6 p.m. It doesn't matter, right? And secondly, uh, in terms of the place, so for example, there, there's a youth life group. Right? They meet at a certain location in in Bangalore. The life group leader has the freedom to also, uh, you know, change the place. They can, uh, for example, they they're meeting at a certain place. They can, uh, and the life group leader can say, hey, hey, this week, can we meet at this coffee day, which is at the center of the city? Let's all meet there. We'll have coffee. We'll have life group inside coffee day. Spend a few moments in God's word, discuss everything, and then uh, we'll return back home. So they have the freedom to do that, right? Just that everyone in the group must be informed, right? So uh, so they have, they, have, they have the freedom to choose the timing, they have the freedom to choose the place as well. Right? It's just that you can't have it every Sunday in a coffee day. Uh, you can if you'd like to, but uh, it gives you more freedom in a close setting, uh, avoids disturbance and sound and all of that. Uh, so in fact, APC, we did have uh, a couple of youth life groups that met at coffee days. Right? So we had this whole, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, you know, a deal with coffee day where uh, we would come, and we would have one uh, coffee and a and a sandwich for everyone. So coffee day will book the entire place, like entire like 10, 12 chairs. So once we all come, one coffee and a sandwich, and we could sit there for more than two hours odd. And uh, I, I the youth group used to do that. So so yes, Mangi, to answer that, uh, they can choose their own time, own place, but the point is it should still be effective. Right, and two to answer your question regarding whether uh, you know if APC controlling our life group leaders. Now, there are certain guidelines that are very important. Right, uh, remember that when we do something, there must always be there are always reasons, and uh, uh, and when we do it, we want to see what is the most effective way. Now. The reason we we encourage and we want all our church, uh, all our life group members, to only do the Sunday sermon, was because initially, we had life groups, and people would you know discuss any topic. Somewhere early 2012, uh, 20 yeah I think it was 29, 2010 around that time. We had a lot of problems, because. There were people who are coming and, you know, many people are reading up, they're going online, listening to sermons. And what's happening is there were wrong teachings that were happening in the church. So some of them that I can think of was, uh, I think there was one where, uh, uh, you know, this whole thing of uh, David and, uh, David and, J and, Jonathan, and there was another one where you know about the gifts of the spirit, right? Only some people can flow in it; others cannot flow in it, right? So we began to realize, hey, um, like these are good leaders, right? By and by heart, they're very good, but to we had to take into consideration all the members who are part of the life groups. Imagine what is going in, right? Some of the life groups may be wonderful, you know, good teaching, right? But some are, you know, it's just a misunderstanding, wrong, wrong interpretation of the word. And then we found out that a lot of them were misled. Misled in the sense they, the word was not interpreted the right way. And, you know, these questions started coming to us. 
then we realize that hey uh, especially in terms of god's word we must be a uh, right we must teach the true right word of god so that is the reason why we came up with every sunday discuss what is on uh, you know the sunday sermon topic and that way we also know that everyone in the church are on the same flow there's no kind of wrong teaching that's happening it's not that we don't trust our life group leaders right we trust them but with regards to our teaching we want to ensure that our teaching is right right uh, so that's why mangi we've we've set it we've set certain standards that way right so uh, there will be times when you know so for example uh, uh during the christmas season right we give freedom we always give freedom to our leaders and right? we tell them you know you can uh, you can go for outreaches you can go to children's homes destitute homes as a group uh, you know some of them go to orphanages uh, and they do all of that right we don't control them we don't say don't go you have to sit you have to you know we let them go uh, it's just that certain things it's very important real right? because it, because that is seed the seed of god's word and we want to make sure that the word is right the teaching is right now what's the point of having fellowship and and the community and all of that when the word is not right meaning we're teaching something wrong so that's why we focus in this area we're kind of a little bit strict right because we are speaking into other people's lives and and so we make sure that you know uh, what is being taught is uh, we are aware of it so yes mike right all right any other questions christopher uh, you have a question oh yes i just had uh, actually uh, two questions so uh, one one is uh, you could give us a few examples of ice breakers that uh, that you uh, that you would sort of you know uh, that you think has worked well that's one and the second one is actually just to extend um mangi's question a little bit and i was just thinking about it, is that if there is a topic which is a uh, you know something that is uh may not be you know bible related specifically but you know a topic which is uh, a very 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 much in the in the in the in the you know very 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 current and where that topic can be consistent consistent in a particular meeting uh you know meeting across all the groups so that it's that topic is then you know actually uh you know um, uh, selected uh, you know from uh, from the uh, from the main uh, church and you know it is it is uh, discussed within the smaller groups um you know uh, consistently that is and then you know getting the feedback and then the feedback you know comes it goes back to the to the church um could be could be an approach that uh, that may work uh because um um that way you know there is uh there is consistency but there is also a certain level of discussion which may not necessarily sort of filter up uh to you know to the church uh, in itself yeah so just yes. just a suggestion over there yeah sure sure thank you so much christopher yes to answer your first question <clears throat> some of the ice breakers could be uh, a simple quiz you know uh if there are 10 people divided into team a team b you can ask maybe 10 questions uh, a quiz from the bible um uh that is one of the ice breakers two uh, uh, is doing maybe be maybe a, a a small skit uh like a dumb charades kind of skit and uh getting the people to say what they are you know what they are enacting that's another option uh, uh another ice breaker could be just an action song right sing an action song uh in between um so yeah you can come up with things like that right uh, uh i i'm sure the life group leaders will have many many ideas uh, but these are things that i can think of quiz action song or uh, something like a uh, you know this this enacting and uh, and you know uh, something like that so uh, <clears throat> those are some of the options and yeah christopher to answer your to share you thank you for sharing your second opinion that's that's actually a good one right uh it can be done because um it is maybe uh, you know so if i 
got you right we're trying to say that you know some topic that we covered maybe a year back or so can we revisit that topic across all life groups and talk about it so probably two months just talk about that topic yes that can be done because we know that um you know that 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 is the material that's being discussed we never thought we never we have never done it we've never revisited and you know uh, uh the, I, I think the reason is because what is done on uh, on sunday it's more current so we usually think of discussing that but this is something that it can be done right so uh yeah but what i also would like to share uh, to add to mangi's uh, uh question was uh now there are some life groups what they do is they meet one week and they talk about uh the Sunday Sunday sermon, the discuss open discussions and questions on the Sunday sermon. Then they meet online, right? And online they talk about other topics, right? Uh, maybe understanding the prophetic or uh, gifts of the spirit or, or, or anything else. They talk about anything else. Uh, so there are some groups that do that as well. But then that's not considered as a life group. But they just meet together and. Uh, you know discuss and pray and yes so there are groups that way so as far as i know there are some women groups who you know they meet at apc they meet every week and they and they discuss other topics right? uh, and we don't tell them you cannot discuss any other topic yet you know so they are open to discussing whatever they would like so uh, yeah all right any other question oh, we can close All right, right. Let's let's close in prayer, and we'll pick up from uh, from this upward inward model by Jim Ingley. We'll pick it up from next week onwards. So, anyone can please close in prayer. Oh. Mangi, would you like to close in prayer, please? Uh, yes, Pastor. Let's pray. Go ahead. Lord, uh, thank you, Father. Thank you for for this time, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love, Lord. And thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father, that you've given us this opportunity, Lord, to to learn, Father. You've given us strength, and you've, you're giving us understanding, Lord, so that your work, Lord, may go forward. We pray, Father, that you be with us, Lord. Teach, teach, teach us more, Lord, as we, we follow on what we've learned. And as the way forward, Father, we pray that you guide us, Lord. And you also protect us and protect our families, too. In your mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Mangi. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a wonderful week ahead. I'll see you next week. God bless. Bless.